Hello, I'm Paul Stockdale from ABCPE, the site where we make VCE physical education as easy as ABC. Today I want to talk about fitness components as we try and assist you to build your own training program. There are, there are 12 fitness components that we need to memorize and we use the acronym FLABS and Mrs. AABC in order to memorize them. We also need to know definitions for each of those, factors affecting for each of those, and we need to be able to apply them to the sport that we're watching or coaching. We're going to use Scott Pendlebury to help us do just that. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. Like we used to do. We don't talk anymore. What was all for? Oh, we don't talk anymore. Like we used to do. I just heard you tell me what you do. It's great to watch Pendle's strut his stuff, but you can see from that uh, digital video review, we could pick up quite a number of fitness components, and of course this is the idea of an activity analysis, and it's the first step in writing your training program. We need to be able to reveal major fitness components, energy system skills, movement patterns, muscle groups, work to rest ratios that are specific to whatever the sport is that you've been asked to write the program on or whatever the position or whoever the athlete is, in this case, Scott Pendlebury. We're going to use that um, to justify the fitness components that I've chosen as part of my training program for Scott Pendlebury. So if the first step is the activity analysis, normally the second step is fitness testing. That, of course, is out of this study design. We'd use fitness testing once we've identified the fitness components and energy systems from our activity analysis. We'd want to determine Scott's strengths and weaknesses, and typically we'd train the strengths, uh, sorry, the weaknesses more often than we train the strengths. In my program, I'm only going to choose four fitness components to try in your program. And the first one I'm going to choose is aerobic power. So for all of these fitness components, you're gonna to need to go through in detail in the text so that you know the definition, in this case, the maximum rate of ATP production from the aerobic energy system. But more importantly, you're gonna to need to be able to justify that aerobic power is important for your athlete. In this case, you can see that I've used data, total time being 99.3 minutes and distance of 12.4 kilometers indicates that aerobic power is very important for Scott Pendlebury. There's some other sporting examples of athletes that require aerobic power, marathon running, Scott, cross-country skiers are the, um, the, the granddaddies of them all in terms of aerobic power. Um, fitness testing is out, as I said, and just to touch on the methods that you would use or could use to improve aerobic power. We'll do another video on that later on. Another thing that you guys will need to understand are the factors affecting each of the fitness components. I've bolded age and gender because age and gender are a front pocket answer. That is, all of the fitness components are affected by age and gender. Um, but often VK will ask for another one or another two. So make sure that you've got one at least in your back pocket and there's a couple. So I've chosen muscular power also. You will have noted that, um, and there's my definition, you will have noted that Scott Pendlebury um, required muscular power of the legs. Remember it's muscle specific, 12.4 um, kicks per game. Um, Number of leaps for high marks, 4.4 per game. Um, and muscular power of the arms. Remembering that in our activity analysis, we can identify different muscle groups. Well, he uses his arms and muscular power in his arms to handball. 
once again, we need to have other sporting examples. Um, your javelins, your shot puts, etc., are fantastic events um, requiring muscular power. Um, and we need to know how to improve, and in this case, resistance training um, and plyometric training will improve muscular power. There's our factors affecting which you are going to need to remember. Our age and gender are our front pocket answers. We'll need at least one other. I've selected anaerobic capacity as another fitness component that I saw uh, Scott needed. Uh, there's the definition. Uh, so during his high intensity surges, of which there are 99, um, when he sprints, so all the high intensity work is, requires anaerobic capacity, but also the work to rest ratio of one to two would indicate to me that the anaerobic glycolysis system is important when Scott's involved in the play. There's another sporting example, and I will use intermediate interval training or short interval training to improve anaerobic capacity. Factors affecting, make sure that you've got a couple of front and one back pocket answer. So flexibility will be the fourth fitness component that I identified. Um, so when he kicks 12.4 times per game, he requires a large range of motion around his hip joint, not quite as much as Taylor Harris, albeit. Um, so we would use flexibility training to improve that, um, and there's a number of different types of training which we'll go through when we get to the training methods section. Plenty of factors affecting flexibility, age and gender are not obvious ones, make sure you've got more. Now, there are other fitness components that I could have identified. There they are there. Um, that's okay, as long as you use data to justify their inclusion for Scott. And note that there's a few that I wouldn't include just because I know that I won't be asked to train them, things like balance and coordination. Now, what sort of question might we get from VCAR on this? Well, here's one from the 2015 exam. Please note that um, health-related and skill-related fitness components are no longer in the study design. That's why I blanked that out. And there are our answers. And please note that whilst you weren't asked to define those fitness components, you really needed to use the definition to justify why you selected them. So in our next videos, we're going to go through the third and fourth steps. That is, we need to choose training methods that we're going to use to train the fitness components that we've identified, the four, um, and we need to speak about the training principles um, that we're going to stick to to make sure that the program works for Scott. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope that's been helpful as you look to prepare for your training program. Please visit our website.